Hello, fifth graders. I just finished this drawing right here, and it's using a certain drawing technique that you guys have been using. I wonder if you can guess what it is. I'll wait. Yep, you're right. It's one point perspective. Can you guys spot where the one point perspective is? Like, what, are, what is the evidence for where the one point perspective is? That's right. It's these lines right here. These lines lead back to a common vanishing point. As well as these lines over here. I'm going to show you how to do um, a drawing similar to this. And I'm going to walk you through the steps of, of making this drawing right now. The first step is to create a horizon line. And I want to make sure that the horizon line is parallel with the bottom and the top of the paper. It's always helpful for me to turn my paper and make sure that lines look like they're parallel. When I look at it this way, I can't always quite tell. The next step is to create the basic shape of the window. Actually, no, it's not. The next step is to draw the vanishing point. That's going to be bound in the middle of the line there. Then the next step is to create the basic shape of the window. And it's going to be a pretty large window. I kind of, for these purposes of this artwork, I kind of want you to make sure that the window is going to go around the vanishing point. But it can be more over to this side or more over to that side, depending on what you want. Okay, you can see that that box, that rectangle, is pretty large on the paper. It's taking up a lot of the space of the paper. And I actually don't need all of the horizon line now because we're thinking about this as a window. And so we just basically cut a hole in a wall. And so we can't see through the wall, so we erase this part of the horizon line. Now... I'm going to have, I'm going to make this window look like it has depth and thickness to it. That's the whole point of the one point perspective today. So from the corners, I'm going to have lines that point directly at that vanishing point. I'm not going to draw these lines the entire way though. Okay, so my lines probably don't need to be that long either, but I made them just a little bit long and I can always erase the extra, okay? I do want the depth or the thickness of this window to be fairly thick, just like it would be a real wall. So it shouldn't be paper thin. Um, I'm also going to have us try and put a pane of glass in between um, the inside part of the window and the outside part of the window. So. We'll see that take shape, and in order to do that, we need to make sure that the thickness of the window is a little bit thick, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide on the thickness of the window and start making lines that are parallel with these lines and that connect at the corners with these lines that I've done. Okay, so all of those corners should intersect with this line that I have going to the vanishing point. Okay, and you can notice over here that the thickness of the wall appears to be thicker than over here. Believe it or not, that is correct based on what we're seeing because of where we put the vanishing point. Since this part of the window is closer to the vanishing point, then it has less of that side of the window for us to see. It's more at an angle tilted away from us. Over here is farther away from the vanishing point, which means from our perspective, we're seeing more of the side of the inside part of the window. Okay? the same thing for the bottom and the top. The top is just a little bit further away 
from the horizon line and the bottom is just a little bit closer to the horizon line so when it's closer it starts to get thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner when it's further away it gets thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker it's a good idea to erase lines that you don't need as you go so that you kinda have um, a cleaner artwork and you don't have a bunch of confusing lines that don't belong okay so the next step that I'm going to do on this drawing is to again try to increase the realism of this being an actual window and I'm gonna put a pane of glass in between this section okay so all I really need to do is I need to put another box in between those and so I'm just gonna cut this space in half pretty much and have a line I'm gonna go all the way around with it okay so one thing you really need to focus on is having lines be parallel with the appropriate lines so this line is parallel with the edge of the paper this line is parallel with this line this line is parallel with this line all these lines are par parallel with each other and then these horizontal lines are all parallel with each other and if you can do that then these corners and details line up where they're supposed to a lot easier okay okay so it's just starting to take shape and maybe look like a window I still need to do a little bit more to give it details that are window like okay so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a a middle piece that's kind of a dividing line that kind of makes it look like it's a sliding window that one side slides open and the other one um, stays put okay okay it's looking a little bit more like a window now notice how I erased lines that um, I wouldn't see if something were blocking it right so we got to think about what things are in front and what things are behind other things and then that kind of tells us what we should be erasing okay so now I'm going to add some decorations to the wall area so this is an inside wall this is a view looking outside I'm going to put some pictures on here and I know that my original horizon line was right there because I drew it too dark and I can't erase it anymore and that's why it's important for you to draw lightly so that you can erase the appropriate lines completely but I'm going to put a, um, a picture up here and a picture down here I kind of want to do one above the horizon line and one below and there's a reason why I want to do that Okay, so these picture frames are going to have some thickness to them, just like the window has some thickness to it. So, from these corners, I'm going to have lines that lead and point directly to that vanishing point. Same thing on this picture frame right here, right here, and right here. The only corners I'm not going to do are here and here, because if I were to do them, I would be drawing little lines inside the picture frame and I don't really want to do that because it's not a see-through picture frame okay so those lines are really short because the picture frames don't have a lot of thickness to them they're just they just have a little bit but we would still want to show it so I drew them really short but they do lead directly to that point now what I need to do is I need to actually decide on the thickness of the picture frame and draw lines that are parallel to the front edge of the picture frame. Okay, I want to show you something about this, and I did this on purpose. 
we can see a lot more of the side edge of the picture frame than we can of the top. That was on purpose because I wanted to show you that as things get closer to the horizon line that was originally there, we see less and less of the top or bottom of it. So if you look at this picture frame, it's just a sliver of difference between two lines. Okay, but it still exists. Same thing here too. On the sides, we see more of it because it's further away from the vanishing point. Okay, so the sides matter when it's when we're talking about um, the distance to the vanishing point, and the top and bottom matter when we're talking about the distance away from the horizon line. Okay. Now a picture frame has a picture in it, so I'm going to draw a rectangle that's inside of these larger rectangles to be where the picture goes. When you do this, you don't really have to pay a lot of attention to the vanishing point, at least not yet. Okay, so pictures are going to go in there now. Now, if we are really picky about what we're seeing here, we could take this a step further and we could show how the wood part of the frame is a little bit more raised up than the glass part of the frame and show the side of the little wood piece right here and the bottom of the wood piece right here because technically we would see it but you really don't need to that's going to be such a small little sliver of a detail that you could get away without doing it you could just make that line just a hair thicker or have a line that's right next to it and that really would be enough to indicate how we can see those sides based on where the um, vanishing point is. We would not do that for this line or this line because we're seeing the side over here and we're seeing the side over here. We're seeing the bottom right here and we're seeing the bottom right here because this is above the horizon line. So same thing over here, what I would do is I would have a line and then a line, the bottom. The thing I'm trying to help you guys understand is how things change a little bit um, depending on a, an object's position relative to the horizon line and the vanishing point. Okay, because up here, when I'm looking above at something, it's above the horizon line, I'm seeing these parts, but when it's below the horizon line, I'm seeing these parts. Okay, so technically I think that I could be done with the basics of one point perspective with this. There's certainly other things that I could do that involve one point perspective, but I'm gonna leave that part of it like this for now. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna be creative and spend some time decorating like what goes inside the picture frame, what is gonna be seen outside the window. So there's not a lot of instruction that I need to go um, through and talk with you about concerning that. It's just going to be a matter of um, being creative.
Okay, fifth graders, I'm going to call this drawing done. Um, as you can see, I went through and I made a whole bunch of other lines and shading and details in my picture. Um, I created different um, darks and lights and kind of against each other too, side by side, so that they'd stand out. I created different textures. So like the picture frame texture right here, kind of a scratchy look to it. The hair of this creature is really curly. You can tell from the lines that I used. Um, the craters in the moon kind of have a rough look to them from the scratchy lines I used. Um, and the tentacles, sort of a furry, rough um, texture going on with those tentacles. I used this thing called contrast to make everything show up really well. So dark versus lights in different areas, different dark details and light details, the dark of the space, um, and then the lightness of the edge of the moon, lightness of the edge of the tentacles against the darkness of the sky. So that's uh, different ways to use contrast, as well as these um, sharper details that I've added to. I went back in and created sharper details. You can also notice maybe that I wasn't as careful with my lines um, when I redrew a lot of the lines. I did that kind of on purpose. I feel like it gave it a little bit of extra um, flavor to look at, a little bit more interesting and a little bit of character rather than just having those really perfectly straight lines. It looks a little bit more real that way. Okay, so I'm going to give you a chance to um, do this on your own. Good luck.